started just now. Um, we're going to be talking to you today about improving your PubMed skill, search skills. As ever, I'm Maureen, and this is Orby. Um, and we're just going to adjust the Orby. camera a little bit. Hopefully you can all see us and hear us. Um, and oops, sorry. we're going to start off with our usual rundown of MyNet services. Uh, for those of you who don't know or just need a refresher, um, we're going to look at the components of PubMed. We're going to talk about how you create an effective search strategy in PubMed. Um, and we're going to talk about the free full text uh, that's available in PubMed. So that's the stuff that you don't need to use MyNet to access. Um, and how to use, utilize PubMed's clipboard to print and save references. Um, so what's MyNet? It's, uh, it's pronounced MyNet, again, not McNet. It's Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network, um, which we provide to you guys, uh, health professionals in Manitoba, except Brandon. <laughs> um, and this is the team. There's Orvi, there's me, there's Gail, and uh, there's Cheryl, who's the library assistant, who gets you all the wonderful documents that you need when you need them. Um, if you don't have a MyNet library card, we recommend that you sign up for, mm -hmm. for one uh, so that you can get access to all our services, not just our wonderful free webinars. <laughs> um, our main services are literature searches, document delivery, current awareness, and training education and orientation sessions like this one. So we're going to start this off with a poll, um, which is... Oh, sorry, it was the poll. Move there used to be it. slides in there, yeah. <laughs> but now we'll launch the poll, um, which, have you ever searched PubMed? And if you guys could just answer that for us, that would be great. Okay, okay. okay so it looks like a, a pretty reasonable breakdown there. So we've got... Okay. Some who've never searched, uh, most have searched a few times a month, and uh, doesn't seem like we have any super users. <laughs> so That's hopefully okay. this will be useful to all of you. Great. I'm just gonna make sure we're back. Okay. So, in terms of what PubMed is, it's developed by the National Library of Medicine in the United States. It contains uh, 5,000 or more high-quality peer-reviewed journals from uh, 1950 to present, uh, emphasis on North America, uh, especially the United States, but it also has international material. And it covers the, the medical sciences, medical and health sciences. Um, this is what it looks like in terms of the, the layout of the page, if you haven't seen it before. Um, so it's not the prettiest website in the history of websites. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> I do think so, um, but it, you know, it, it does its job. Um, and so we're going to be talking about some of some of the features you can see there. They've got the basic search box just at the top with the advanced search feature underneath. Um, there's a section for online tutorials and FAQs. If you decide that this section isn't enough and you need more, more information, um, there's single citation matcher, which we'll be talking about. Uh, clinical queries, which we'll be talking about. The MeSH database, which we won't be talking about unless you guys really want to hear about it. Um, but that can be useful as well um, for more advanced searching if you if you need that. Uh, journals database and my MCBI. And I'm going to pass it over to Orby now. Okay, so I'm going to take us live to PubMed. And if you have more than one screen, um, at your workstation, I'm just going to make this bigger, and I always forget how to, there we go. Uh, if you have more than one screen, feel free to follow along with us as we go. And as ever, we are monitoring chat, so if you have any questions along the way, feel free to just pop that into the chat box, and we will respond. Okay, so... We're good there. Okay, so just to do a really simple keyword search in PubMed, um, we can just enter in a text in this um, in the search box at the top. So I'm going to enter in West. I'm going to start to type West Nile virus, and you can see that it then prompts me. So PubMed is pretty smart. 
Not, not as smart as Google, but it's pretty smart, and it will prompt you to things. It doesn't make a difference if you click on one of these things or if you just type in your phrase by yourself. Uh, it's going to have the same results. This can be useful as well if you're not sure what things go along with the topic that you're looking at. It'll show you sometimes different versions of it, like we saw West Nile encephalitis there. That's right. Example. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll just take a kind of look around um, our results here. So again, this top panel at the top is our search box, and then in the middle are our results. So PubMed has made some recommendations as to the best matches. Sometimes this is helpful, sometimes not at all helpful, uh, depending on what you're looking for. And then you can see that if we go a little bit further, it tells us that the search results that we're now looking at um, results number was 1 through 200 of 6,690 results. So uh, I'll just scroll down a little bit, and then you can just um, get a sense of what the results page looks like. So the blue underline is the title of the article, and then we have the author's name, the journal title, and some information about the journal. So it's the volume, issue, page numbers, the DOI, um, that it, and that it's a review article, and then that there's a PubMed um, number. So one thing uh, it, that's really always helpful to know is that every record in PubMed has its own number. So if ever you were requesting an article from us, um, instead of typing out an entire citation, you could just give us the title and then the PubMed number, um, and then it's really quick for us to look up and really easy for you to copy and paste. Um, what else are we going to look at? If I scroll up a little bit too, uh, you can see that it says the format, sort by, and per page. So you can change this based on how you'd like to look at the, rec um, the records. So I'm going to, looking at the summary isn't really helpful to me, so I want to change it so that I can view the abstract. So I just click on that summary and then I click abstract. And then it will change my results so that I can also read the abstract, so I can know a little bit about what the um, article is about. And our internet is a touch slow here today. You may need to just... Yeah. Oh, there. Okay, so it's loading now. And you'll see it got rid of those recommended, um, PubMed recommended articles. And now I can see uh, the abstracts as I scroll down. So it just gives me a bit more information. So depending, sometimes it's just fine to look at titles and uh, citation information. Other times you want to see that. You can also change the sort. So maybe you want to sort it by author or by title or by publication date. You can change that. And you can also change how many uh, you're seeing on the screen. So that's just kind of a really easy way to look around. Okay, moving on are one of the um, greatest features in PubMed, which are the filters. So on the left, let's say we were looking for only review articles on West Nile virus. If I go to the left-hand side, you can see this list of article types, text availability, PubMed Commons, publication dates. These are all things that you can do filters for. So if I want to... Um, filter by review article, I just look under article types, and then I can click on review, and that will limit um, all my uh, references to only review articles. And again, we'll just wait for a second while our slow internet uh, just takes its time. This always happens whenever I am showing people things live on the internet. It is always super, super slow. So most of the time it's relatively fast here, so yeah, it's it, doing this just special. Just, just for you guys. Always does, well it's me, it always <laughs> does it for me. There we go. So it's loading now and you can see instead of those 600 and, or 6,600 references, now we're down to 833. Um, I can also, uh, now this is one of, so that was really easy. Pop in a term, click on review, done. Uh, if you wanted to limit to English language, 
Um, it's a bit of a couple step process. So this might be something that you want to make a little note of. You'll see it, there's nothing in this list of filters that says I can limit to language. So I have to come down to the bottom here where it says show additional filters. And I get this pop-up box where now I can say I want to also see my filters for language and then I click show. Now the tricky here thing, or the tricky thing here is now I actually have to limit by language. So under languages now I can click English. I don't know why they make this like three-step process, but it's just one of those things. So I've got that running now, and we'll see then those, um, those results drop by a little bit. So you can, any depending on what you're searching for, sometimes, um, sometimes the filters are really helpful, sometimes you don't ever need them. Okay, it's still just loading about still that. Thinking. Still thinking. Okay, there we go. So now we're done to 739, so it brought it down a little bit, but not too much. Now, one really, one of my most favorite features about PubMed is the ability to limit to free full text. So uh, if any of you have ever requested documents, full text documents through us before, you know um, that we always get them to you, but sometimes it takes a few days or depending on what our, um, what, what our backlog is, sometimes it takes, uh, um, sometimes we have to split up the requests and send just a few articles at a time. So if ever you wanted to just check and see what was freely available to you that you could access right away, um, you do it the same way we just filter to review and to English. We go under text availability and we say free full text. So I click, I should have clicked on that before I <laughs> get the description. Um, so it's going to limit to things that have free full text. Now it's not, there. I do find instances where sometimes it's not perfect. That yeah. Usually it doesn't ever limit to anything that is not available, that only is behind a paywall, but sometimes it misses things that do, that are freely available. Yeah. But it's a great place to start. Yeah, and, and sometimes the free, oh, oh that's good. <laughs> sometimes the free full text, uh, you wind up with links to external sites that maybe aren't functioning as well as. Okay, well, uh, so we're having some technical. We'll just okay. give us a little try. We do have, um, we did make slides. Oh, there we go. Okay. So free full text, I'm just going to, so you can see now, so now we're down to 249 references, and you can see it's kind of in this red color um, that it says free, free PMC article. Um, are they all free PMC? They look like it. Okay. Oh, and then this one just says free article. So PMC is PubMed Central. Um, if you're interested about that, we're happy to go into detail. But the important thing is that this article text is free. So to click on it, you just click on, you can click on either the title or on that um, free text um, thing. And now we're in the article. So now we can see even more about this, this record. Um, and then we come over to the right hand side and you'll see it gives us two options. There's the PMC. So PubMed Central is basically a repository of, um, of references or articles that have been funded by big government um, funders and they are mandated to provide those open access. So PubMed Central is kind of like where those things can all live. Uh, so we can click on that to get the full text or we can click on Nature Publishing Group, so that is the publisher of this particular author. I don't know what you, I usually just click on PubMed Central, I usually find it's the most direct way to go into an yeah. article. And it tends to be pretty consistent, like good quality. Nature Publishing Group is going to have a decent website, but a lot of the other independent open access journals, their website is bad. Or and it's sometimes just like, you like need to go and find it again on the website instead of a direct link yeah, to the journal. Yeah, sometimes it's a lot of clicks. Here, um, I'm right into PubMed Central, and I can just scroll through the entire article, or back up at the top, it gave me some different um, options, and I can, if I want the PDF, which I find most people do, because then you can save it or you can print it easily, it's just right there. So that's a really easy... Um, it's basically dual search, filter by free full text, click on the link, boom, you're in. Um, we'll go back now, maybe, hopefully. 
<laughs> now that we're in, oh, I can just actually open a new tab. Yeah, okay. um, I'll show you some more. So that was just a really, really, really simple search. Uh, I can show you now the, um, the clipboard. So I'll go back to my 249 references. I'm going to show my abstract. It's weird that it keeps thinking. Yeah, that it thinks on that. And so this is um, this feature. the The clipboard is helpful for if you decide, okay, 249 references. I'm just going to kind of skim through those quickly and find some ones that look good to me. And what'll happen is, let's say we really like the first one, we can just click on this little box and it'll make a check mark. So it says we like number one. Number two and three don't really look that great, and we like four, five, and six. So you can just screen through as you go and click on those check marks, or make those check marks for the references that look good to you. And then at the top of the page, you can say send to clipboard. So I'm gonna add those four items to my clipboard. So this is just a nice way if you're screening through, especially if you're screening through 249 references, um, it's a nice way uh, to collect all the references you found, or if you're also searching on different terms. So maybe you just wanted to search on West Nile, then West Nile virus, then West Nile encephalitis, is mm -hmm. that what it was? Encephalitis. Um, you can just kind of select different things as you go. And then they all collect here in the clipboard. So I just clicked on that over by where it says clipboard. I clicked on four items. And now they're displayed here all in one place for me. So what I can then do is then I can send them to I can send them to a file, I can send them to my email, I can send them to a citation manager, but it's just a really nice place of, it's basically like a shopping cart, right? As you're going through, it's like, oh, I want this one and this one and this one, um, and then you can email them to yourself or send them to yourself. So a note, uh, this clipboard doesn't last forever. Um, it PubMed usually claims it's good for 24 hours. Depending on how servers flip, um, we have two different servers that we talk to here in our building. So I know sometimes I lose some stuff in my clipboard if I don't take it right away. But basically, if you're just active in PubMed and you're working on it and you're sending things to your clipboard, don't let them sit there for too long. Make sure you um, message them to yourself right away, and then uh, then you'll then you'll have them. Okay, uh, maybe we'll just pause for a quick second. If you have any questions, please use the chat box, and we'll just um, uh, so we'll wait for that, and we'll come to our next part, which is about search questions. Yeah. So, as you may have noticed from that search, we were getting a lot of a lot of results on a lot of different things. West Nile virus is a broad topic, and so in PubMed, as with any other search engine, you're going to get better results the more focused you make your question. Um, so if you're doing West Nile virus, something about West Nile virus, what Orvi was just doing there can often be the first step. Like you need to know, you need to gather background information, you need to get a sense of what the question is you need to ask. But you do want to narrow it down a bit and then you'll find you'll have better results. Yeah, and sometimes just popping in a new, you know, some term, mm -hmm. you might have less than 100 results. That might just be plenty. Mm -hmm. Other times, you know, especially if you're searching cancer, 6, yeah. cancer, heart disease, yeah. those really big things you'll need to, to limit to, them a bit. Yeah. So if you've, you've got a well-constructed question, sometimes it's simple. How do you get rid of bad bugs, aside from, you know, panicking and burning down your house? <laughs> Uh, but sometimes they're they're more complicated. Um, so how do you deal with bed bugs? What are the practices? Um, so the, we use this technique called Pico to construct your your search con uh, your complex search questions, um, and we'll go through what that is on the next slide. Um, but you want to create a list of synonyms for the key concepts that you're looking at. You want to combine them with the Boolean operators and or or, which we'll also be talking about in more detail. Um, and so this this helps keep you focused. If you guys are anything like me, and I assume like RV, it's easy to be like, oh, well, that's really interesting. I'm going to keep looking at that. Oh, that's really cool. But it has nothing to do with what you're actually looking for. So if you create this guideline, then that keeps you on task. It keeps you focused. Um, and it 
make sure that you're only grabbing yourself the most relevant articles. Um, the, the getting distracted is wonderful in the yeah. early search phases, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but later on it just adds unnecessary time. So, um, so what is PICO? Stands for Population Intervention Comparison and Outcome. You want to be using at least three of these concepts to develop your search strategy. Um, so for instance, if your question is, are heat treatments more effective at eradicating bed bugs than cold treatments? Well, you've got your population, your intervention, your comparison, and your outcome. So your population, individuals with bed bugs. Your intervention, heat treatment. Your comparison treatment, freezing. And your outcome is eradication. You want to destroy them <laughs> because they're horrible. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's what you're looking for, which one's going to be more effective. Um, and so you, you build this little PICO grid. And we're going to be sending out a, a handout to you along with these slides mm -hmm. after it's over. And on the handout, we have this grid with a sample of it. And then we have an empty grid for you to play around with your own question or to just have a copy on hand so that you can always uh, do it up. So here we've got the populate the bed bugs, um, but a synonym for bed bugs is their Latin name, Chymax electularius. And then you've got your intervention, so you use heat, but it might be a dryer, it might be setting your house on fire. <laughs> you've got your your comparison, freezing, cold, um, and you've got your outcomes. You know, eradication, rid, control. Uh, Yes. <laughs> and do you just yeah, and so the um, the handout that we're sending, um, I know it'll look just kind of simple, that sort of this essentially blank blank um, table, but it really does this is always every single time that I'm doing a search that I am always structuring things. Because sometimes they'll say, well, wait, is this the population or is this the intervention? Or mm -hmm. is this the outcome or where does it go? So it really helps to to focus the search. And also to then start you thinking about different synonyms. Yeah. And then that's when you have the, the conversation with yourself. Well, am I talking about, uh, you know. And, yeah, we really can't underestimate the importance of the synonyms. You might use the term bed bugs, um, but I don't know how, I, I mean, I think bed bugs are pretty widespread. But there are some places where, okay, everybody in Winnipeg uses that term. Everybody in Canada uses that term. But people in the southern United States which is where most of the literature is coming from, maybe. That's Don't right. use that term at all. Well, and in our, uh, you know, we chose, I chose um, heat and cold comparison uh, in this example, but there's also different kinds of chemicals and things that mm -hmm. you can use uh, for bed bugs. And they all have, they have trade names, they have um, generic names, and like Marie just indicated, by country, they also have different names. So um, synonyms, again, really super important. Yeah. And uh, so then you... Oh, shoot. What? Oh, I, you I forgot to create the poll <laughs> on this one. Okay. Well, well maybe just everybody in, enter in the chat. Um, what, what are some Boolean operators? What is Boolean logic? Um, we'll, we'll give you just a few We'll give you a, a moment. So you can use your chat box and tell us if you know what Boolean, anything about Boolean. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we've got a response. Boop, boop. Okay. We've got and or or mentioned. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Those. Um, oops, I should move yes. Quotes. 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 So uh, putting things in quotes are not Boolean operators, but they are useful search terms. Though yep. actually, they don't search work function. in search functions. They don't work in PubMed, do they? The quotes? Well, they're problematic in PubMed. Yeah. But quotes, since somebody's <laughs> mentioned them, um, that uh, allows you to put a term together, so bed bugs in quotes. Yeah, we'll give you bed bugs together, not yeah. Yeah. do you have bugs in your bed? Yeah, so you know, other search engine, engines might look for bed and bugs, and anything with bed and bugs in it um, could come up. Uh, this versus that, and, and or, or yes, yes, no, plus minus. Yeah, that's yeah. in the, yeah, yeah. So there's also a not operator that mm -hmm. can be used in uh, Boolean searches. So you're looking for bed bugs, not, Silver fish. Silver. I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking of another house bug. Well, you know, I was just doing a, a search this morning, and it was about career transitions, and it was from a physician, 
and there was a bunch of things coming up in the nursing literature, and um, surprisingly, she was actually quite interested in those. But in other cases, you might want to say, okay, actually not, not nursing. Yeah. Okay. And or not. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like you guys have a good sense of that. Um, so moving on to the next slide here. Oops, sorry. It's okay. So you want to use or to combine like synonyms so that uh, the bed bugs and the chymix uh, Latin name you'll, that doing an or means you're looking for this or this. So anything that has bed bugs in it, anything that has Chymax lectularius in it, it will look for. Um, you're using and to combine different concepts. So you would want to, you know, bed bugs and heat. It will look for things that only contain both bed bugs and heat. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're building your thing, you can use these, these brackets to link these concepts together. So you've got bed bug or Chymex lactillarius, and you can see we're using the quotes here. Um, as we say, the quotes are kind of in PubMed, so. Problematic, yeah. Yeah, so if you use quotes and it doesn't work great in PubMed, try removing quotes. Yeah. Um, but so in this case, this will look for anything with bed bug or anything with Chymex lactillarius. And then we put that in brackets. So then that bed bug zone is looking, then you say and in brackets again, heat or dryer. So that'll look for anything that has bed bug, like your bed bug concepts and your heat concepts. And in this case, we've also added and freeze or cold. So it'll look for things that have your bed bug concept, your heat concept, and your cold concept. And only all those three things. Um, and you can see in the freeze or cold, there's a little asterisk by freeze. Um, so that what that's a truncation function, and that'll look for freeze, freezing, freezer, freezers, freezers, freezeathon, freezer. <laughs> uh, yeah, freezing. Yeah. Um, so you can do that in the advanced search kind of feature. Uh, but so if you do Oh, we've, we've done a search here and it's pulled up four results for bad bugs and freeze, um, which is not a great deal, but you know, it's some. Um, but you, if you go into advanced search, you see this and you can see your, your history of searching. Um, and you can combine the, uh, the different numbers there if you want to. You could say, I want to search for uh, number five and number eight together. Yeah, and um, and the other really nice thing about this is then you can put in each line each of your concepts. So line one, you would put everything, bugs. yeah, and then you can and or, or your line two, which is then heat, and then um, as you populate those, uh, then they add, then uh, yeah. multiple lines will add there. Yeah, so like we showed you here, it's it's in brackets. And with this one, it's, it's a relatively simple bracketing, but sometimes you can get these concepts where you have to have like tens or twenties of... Uh, That's when you call us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it can get more complicated to do it like this, and sometimes you need to have like ranges of brackets and this sort of thing, and, and it's much easier to build it this way. So you can see, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see my mouse when I move it around, but here in the builder section in the middle, We've got this on each line. You've got bed bug or bed bugs or Chymex lectularius, and then you've got heat or dryer, and then freeze or cold. So you punch that into the advanced search, and uh, you're comparing on the sides with uh, with and here, but you can switch that to or or to not. Mm -hmm. um, and if again, if you need more information on this, there's YouTube tutorial links up in the top, um, and they'll give you a, a more detailed rundown. Well, and and also it's always live. So I know yeah. sometimes too, um, this seems, it, it'll be so straightforward and then in a couple weeks, well maybe more than a couple <laughs> weeks, uh, you can take some time off over Christmas uh, and uh, then you'll go to do it and it'll be like, oh gosh, I've totally forgotten how to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm totally stuck. Uh, the YouTube tutorials are can help you instantly. Yeah. Um, so, and you can see up in the, uh, up there in the top box there, the this one here. I, again, I don't know if you can actually see my mouse or not. I think so. Um, 
but it's showing exactly what you've built down there, up there, in the bracketed manner. So. so it takes your multiple line search and puts it into PubMed likes to do this for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, then it shows you that one uh, one line search. So if you realize you had a spelling mistake or you, that you forgot a word, uh, then it's an easy kind of thing to just pop back in there. Yeah. And so when you do this, you do the search and it comes out and for all this stuff, for your bed bug concept plus your heater dryer concept plus your freezer cold concept, you get three results. And uh, you can see here, down at the bottom in search details, it's showing you the thing, like everything that it searched in even more, whoops, sorry, in even more detail. I thought this was live and I tried to scroll down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's showing you things that it's pulled up that you didn't type in, hot temperature, mesh terms, or hot, all field, or, and if you got to freeze, it would show you all the different iterations of freeze you searched. So. If you do need, if you're finding you're pulling too much stuff up and you need to make it smaller, you can play around in that search details box there. Um, and I'm just going to pass it to Orvi now. Sure. Uh, before I do, are there any questions or is everybody good? No, it takes longer to, to type things out. Yeah, so. well, I'm going to flip to our live version. So there's, that'll give us a chance to... Um, to have that, to have any questions. Okay. So, oh, to clear our filters, if we ever set them, mm -hmm. um, then you can see at the top of my page here it says filters activated. I can just clear all of them at once. Yeah. Or you can always deselect those check marks, um, uh, deselect those check marks as you go. So, um, one thing that's a, sometimes a bit tricky in the general search function of PubMed is how you can answer a clinical question. So um, PubMed has so much information in it, uh, and it's not the, but searching the way we just searched for to answer a clinical question sometimes can take a very, very long time. So PubMed has built this really helpful thing called clinical queries. So from our homepage again of um, pubmed.gov, then I can come down under PubMed Tools and it says Clinical Queries. So if I click on that, it takes me to this page. And again, a really, really simple search box. And I can just type anything in. So if I'm interested in whether I should be giving um, Advil to children who have a fever, I can just type that in really, really, really simply. And it breaks it down for me here. So uh, there's three columns of results. So there's clinical study categories, systematic reviews are in the middle, and medical genetics are on the uh, far side. So medical genetics not really relevant in this instance. Um, and what PubMed has done behind the scenes in this is they've run, they're running an algorithm to find the most uh, the articles that are most likely to be able to answer clinical questions. So this is um, like a nice step if you've searched up to date first and you'd like some more information after up to date or maybe up to date didn't have your topic. Um, this is a really great a really great super 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 easy tool. So the next time you've got a clinical question, you can just again PubMed clinical queries and enter in some information in this um, search box. So it doesn't have to be complicated um, and it's really uh, easy. And if you ever, you can change to your, your category and your scope. So there's broad or narrow and there's different, um, different categories like diagnosis and, um, um, and guidelines. And then if you click on any of these results, then they just take you to the PubMed record. So if you like that one, again, you can send it to your clipboard or you can click on the full text link and it will take you through. So that is um, clinical queries kind of in a nutshell. The other nice feature that we have on that PubMed main page is something called single citation matcher. Um, and this is one of those things like sometimes it will be super relevant for you to use it and sometimes you may never need to use it. But if there's a citation that you know of, or you are looking for something really, um, if you know of an article and you're just trying to find the reference in PubMed, uh, or if you only know a little bit about the citation information, like let's say you were at a 
presentation and somebody and Maureen was presenting and she mentioned, oh, I once wrote this paper, um, you know, and it published it in 2013 and that was all she said about the specifics of the paper and then she goes into some detail. You can use this to then actually be able to find that paper. So um, uh, you basically just come to this page, pop in the information that you know, you don't need to know all of it. Uh, and it will prompt you for a lot of things. So I'll just use myself. I'll search for, again, um, my last name. And you can see I can just search on Dingwall or I can add an initial or I can um, choose my name. I tend to choose something that's just with an initial because it's a little bit more, you never know how people, yeah. the and variations maybe, that people use yeah. with their names. So maybe with somebody like Smith, John. Yeah. yeah. John Smith, you're going to need a little bit more than just John Smith's name. Um, so I could just search on on my name, or let's, uh, if I knew the journal, or I'll just show you. Anyway, you can just pop those in, and then, um, then your results come up. So again, if you've got a journal article, and you want to know more information about it, or you just want to pull up the PubMed record, this single citation feature is, for some reason, works a lot better than just um, putting that information in the search box. I don't know why, it just does. Uh, since we have a little bit of time, maybe we'll show one more thing. And if you have questions or wanted us to focus on anything else, maybe uh, you can enter those in the chat box now. But we'll show you about Mesh. Now this is where Maureen had said to me like, Orvi, are we gonna cover Mesh? And I said, no Maureen. As librarians, we know that we always lose session participants when we talk about MeSH in the very first session. But we have time, so we'll just touch on it. The premise behind MeSH, MeSH stands for Medical Subject Headings, and this is basically for every record in PubMed, the indexers at the National Library of Medicine have gone through and determined what the article is about. And then they have, um, uh, they have a list of subject headings that they can then assign. Um, now, for some things, this isn't really helpful, uh, especially searches like the effectiveness. Oh my gosh, it's my, always my worst nightmare about things about effectiveness. That's not a, a heading. But for things that can sometimes be really confusing, um, for, for especially when words have spelled the same, completely different meanings. Yeah, or... So some... Oh, British uh, American spelling, different or spellings. If yeah, a term has changed historically. Yeah. Um. So it used to be called something, but now it's called this. It'll say, "Well, use this term for this, this, right. this, 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 and this." So some examples include um, HIV and AIDS. AIDS, A I D S. Uh, if you spell it in capital letters or in lowercase letters. In PubMed, it will bring you the same results. And there's a lot of different aids <laughs> that people write about, right? Mm -hmm. um, hearing aids. Hearing aids walking or aids. walking aids, educational aids, all kinds of things. Um, but if you want aids like it's specific to HIV, then MeSH is a great way to go. Um, and another thing like Maureen mentioned about uh, terms changing over time, um, we used to refer to things as sexually transmitted diseases. Now we call them sexually transmitted infections, and there is like a whole bunch of them. But if you wanted to do a search on kind of all of them, um, then instead of typing in HIV, AIDS, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and worrying about all the spellings and all of the names of these things, this is where MeSH can really help you. So at the top of my search box, instead of searching PubMed, I can drop this down to search MeSH. And then I'll go in here, and just since we were talking about it, we can do sexually transmitted, oh, and now we've got all kinds of prompts. So we can do bacterial sexually transmitted disease, bacterial sexually transmitted diseases, plural, um, all kinds of things. So I'm just going to write in sexually transmitted disease. And it brought me up with, or it retrieved three results. So there's, let's just, if I click on sexually transmitted diseases, and I can see just kind of the brief uh, definition of what it is, but when I click on it, then it gives me a lot more information. Um, it shows me all these different subheadings that I could search. And again, in those really, really big topics, 
uh, like cancer or heart disease or even sexually transmitted diseases, sometimes you might just want to say, I want to um, limit to the um, uh, to the therapeutic use or to the transmission or to nursing or any of these different subheadings. Then I can scroll to, or sorry, at the top here, um, it gave me the definition. In this case, it's really concise. Diseases due to or propaga uh, propagated by sexual contact. Sometimes they are, you know, two paragraphs of definition. Um, and then I scroll down and it shows me what the entry terms are. So if I go like, oh, but I don't want sexually transmitted diseases, I want sexually transmitted infections. Well, I can read along here and I can see that they have STIs, STI singular, and sexually transmitted infections. So I know here that when I, even though I want to search on sexually transmitted infections, it will search all of these things for me. And then I scroll down and now it'll show me that all, these are called trees, it'll show me the different kinds. Um, so then I can, now of course this is like a big huge example, um, but I can then say, oh okay, you know what, I only actually wanted gonorrhea, um, or I might say, yeah, I want all of these, all of these different bacterial sexually transmitted diseases. So if you decide that this is what you, sometimes this is just helpful in understanding how things are linked together, sometimes it's helping you understand terminology, spelling, trends in terminology, uh, sometimes you just want to search it. So I'm going to come back up to the top, I'm going to say yes, I want to search sexually transmitted diseases, all of the things that fall under it, I'll click add to search builder, and again, if you forget how to do this, that YouTube tutorial is right there. And then I search, uh, click on search PubMed. So then, I mean, I'm still getting, you know, 300,000 results, um, but this is a good way to, um, to do the search. So this is, uh, you know, PubMed, if you want to use this as a launching point for your searches, just pop in a few terms, find some free, uh, free full text, that's great. If you want to develop your searching so that you're more comfortable adding multiple concepts within using mesh terms and, um, and text word terms, we're happy to help you develop those skills. Uh, we're also always happy to um, just take the search from you and, and run with it. Did I miss anything about Mesh? That's, so. that's the gist. Um, we'll, again, I guess, ask if there are any questions mm -hmm. or, or anything that you guys want more clarification on. Um, you can add, yeah, you can add Mesh to, to do this. So you could do sexually transmitted diseases and Bed yeah. bugs, are you less likely to get sexually transmitted diseases if you have bed bugs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think just to reiterate our top take home messages from today PubMed is free, mm -hmm. give it a try. It's really easy to limit to free full text resources or apply other kind of filters, uh, review articles, language. Um, you know, things from the last five years, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what was, sorry, what was the other one? That one's really important. <laughs> uh, Do your limiting. I think those would mesh, probably be well my instructed question. Oh, yeah, instructor question. Yeah, so just go in knowing what you're searching for. Yeah. If you don't know what you're searching for, spend time finding it out and uh, deciding on it. Yeah. Oh, we've got a Any question questions? or a comment. Oh, oh wait. it went away. Oh, it's back. Uh, well, we're just having a few. Uh, okay, glitches. so wait, maybe under questions. No. Oh. Okay, if one of you guys sent us a message, <laughs> it uh, it has maybe disappeared. Yeah, so. We're just writing it. Yeah. So if if. Hmm. If you wrote us something, rewrite it in the chat box. <laughs> okay. And otherwise, so we'll be online for the next, um, you know, we're available until noon. Um, so if you've got some questions, uh, by all means, let us know. And otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.